QuickBooks Online 2022 Bank Feeds Matching Receive Payment Form. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial. Hold it down control, scroll it up a bit to get to the 125% currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. In the business view as compared to the accounting view, changing to the accounting view is something you can do by going to the cog up top and switch to the accounting view on down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Going back to our bank fee practice file, going to open a few tabs to put reports in by going to the tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating it. Back to the tab to the left, right clicking again and duplicating again. As that is thinking, let's just see where the reports are located back on over here in the accounting view, which is on the left hand side under the reports. If I jump back on over to the business view in the second tab in our bank feed practice problem, it's under the business overview. On the left hand side and then in reports. Closing up the hamburger, and then we're going to go down to that balance sheet, the big balance sheet. We're going to do a range change up top from 01, 01, 21 to 12, 31, 21, and run. And then go to the right and do it again by going to the business overview once again. Reports, closing the hamburger, going down to the P&L, the profit and loss. The ranges are a changing by going to 010121 to 123121 and run again. Let's go to the first tab now and look at our bank feed information, which happens to be in the business view in the bookkeeping area on the left hand side, then under the transactions up top, then under the banking information. If you were to be in the accounting view, it would be located under the banking tab on the left hand side and then under the banking information. So we're going to then see here we've got our bank feed information we pulled in from our bank feeds. We have these left in bank feed limbo, meaning they need a little bit of information, a little love, a little bit more stuff, a little guidance, including at least the account, possibly the vendor and the customer. We've been now looking at a kind of a cash basis system, one on which we're not only cash basis, but reliant on the bank. Now we're going to deviate from that and try to use a, a basis where we're not completely reliant on the bank. We're looking at the invoice type of process if we had an accrual system that we needed to collect invoices. So let's take a look at the flow chart. This is the flow chart for the desktop view, but it just gives us a good idea of the process as we go through it in the same basic form names. So when we're looking at the bank feeds on the customer side of things or the deposit side of things, we're really looking at when the deposit happens as it clears the bank all the way to the right of the process. If however, we need to issue an invoice because we're in that type of business where we got to do the work first, issue an invoice, then track the accounts receivable. We have a couple different areas where the bank feed can be put into place. Last time we looked at a process where we enter the invoice, increasing the accounts receivable, increasing sales, and then we try to connect the bank feed after it already clears the bank to the invoice, which would basically record the receive payment for us as we use the bank feed transaction, decreasing accounts receivable, putting it into the checking account with the receive payment form. Now we're going to imagine a situation where we're entering the invoice, accounts receivable goes up, the other side is sales, and then we collect on it, we receive the payment and we record it into the receive payment. Now this component is a little bit tricky at this point because with this form you could deposit it directly into the checking account at this point in time or you could put it into undeposited funds and then deposit it into the checking account, taking it out of undeposited funds, putting it into the checking account. The reason you might do that second option is because you might have multiple payments, for example, that are going to be grouped together as you deposit them into the system, possibly if you have cash payments or possibly if you have some kind of credit card system that has multiple payments. So then when it clears the bank, you might have multiple basically payments that you had then received and therefore would need to take kind of that added step for uh, the deposit into the bank. So that means that how could the bank feeds fit into it? Well, if we if I have the received payment and I put it directly into the bank 
at this point in time, then I've already recorded the increase to the checking account on our end. And on the bank's end, when it clears, it's just gonna be matching. So we'll use the matching thing. It won't record anything new. It would just match. Or if I put this into the undeposited funds or whatever they call it now, the clearing account, before then depositing it in, I could then do that and then wait till it clears the bank on the bank feeds, at which point I can then take the bank feeds and match it up to the received payment that is currently in the clearing account, which used to be called undeposited funds. And then it would take it out of undeposited funds and actually record it in the checking account with the use of the bank feeds. So let's look at that scenario. So I'm gonna go back on over here. Let's take a look at it and go back on over to our bank feeds and we're gonna kind of work this backwards again. We're gonna look at the deposit and then imagine we're going kind of back in time entering the invoice and the received payment. Now I'm gonna use this interest payment as the example. I know it's a small, it's a small amount, 20 cents or whatever, just for an example. So this is the thing that we're eventually gonna match out so what I'd like to do then is then add another tab up top. So I'm gonna go up top where there's the 20 cents. I'm gonna go up top, right click up top. I'm gonna to duplicate this tab, duplicate the tab, and then we'll go through the same kind of invoicing process. So I'm gonna open up the plus button and let's make an invoice. So we're gonna imagine now we're invoicing. We did work, we're gonna invoice and send it the bill in essence to the customer that we're gonna to hope to get payment on in the future. And let's say up top, we've got customer, customer, number, customer, number, what am I on here? I, I've been numbering them. Number five, customer number five. And hold on, get this out of here. Customer number five, messing me up, man. They're messing me up. And then I'll say tab and set that one up. So we're gonna say save it. And then I'm not gonna enter an email address for the mock problem here. I'm gonna make the date 228, uh, 2021. And then this day sales tax rate didn't mix. So I'm gonna say, okay, tap through on that. I'm not gonna have a sales tax applicable here. I'm gonna use the service item one and I'm gonna put it in place for that 20 cents, the same 20 cents that we saw clearing the bank feed because we're gonna try to match it out eventually to the bank feed. What's this going to do? Well, it's an invoice. So it's gonna be increasing the accounts receivable and it's also gonna increase the sub account for the customer number five, the other side going to revenue for the big 20 cents. Let's go ahead and save it and close it and double check that. So now we'll go on over to the balance sheet. We're going to the balance sheet to see if that is in case indeed what happened by going to run in the report, going into the accounts receivable, the A to the R, the R. And then we're gonna see there's the 20 cents right there. So that's increasing the AR going back up, going back to our balance sheet. Let's go to the income statement side of things, tap into the right and then run it again. Holding control, scrolling up a bit in the services area, going into the services to see that 20 cents, that big 20, there it is, 20 cents has been increases. Make sure that cleared that one. We're gonna go on back over and then let's open up another report to check the sub ledger. Right click it on the tab up top. I'm gonna duplicate it because I want the sub ledger for the accounts receivable to check that one out, which is gonna give us who owes us money by customer, something important if we're tracking that kind of information. So I'm gonna go back onto the reports on the left hand side. I'm just gonna type it in up top and look for the customer balance detail. Customer balance detail, por favor closing the hamburger. And then we see down here, there's the 20 cents for customer number five. So we're tracking the customer that owes us the money. We can also track that of course, by going, let's check it out in the second tab over here. Go into the second tab. We could go on down to the get paid and paid area and take a look at customer numero cinco number five customer and we can see they owe us 20 cents and we have that overdue item uh, here that needs to be then paid, which we could do with the receive payment. So that's the next step we're gonna do here. So we're not gonna hit the bank feed yet. That's what we did last time. Now we're gonna say we're gonna enter the receive payment and then connect the bank feed to the receive payment form in in instead of depositing it. So we could go into the receive payment here. We can also go into it up top here I can say receive payment 
uh, invoice and then receive payment. The more natural way might be just to click on this receive payment. So I imagine the payment has been received. We're gonna go into it and say we've got the payment from customer number five. Let's say it happened on like three one and I won't put a, an amount there. I'm just gonna say, now here's the tricky amount. We could put it directly into the checking account. If we put it directly into the checking account, then that would that would mean that we already recorded it on our end in the checking account before we looked at the bank feeds. So when I use the bank feeds, I'm still going to see it come in from the bank, but I'm just going to match it out to what we have done. And that will help us with the bank reconciliation process, but the bank feed will not be recording anything new. Or we can put it into the payments to deposit, which used to be called the undeposited funds account, which is going to be useful if you have multiple deposits that are going to be combined together that are going to be then put in the bank at one lump sum or you can kind of use it as like a double check here so in other words if i'm going to have the deposits clear uh, for the same that match out to this payment maybe i put these into the payments to deposit and then use the bank feeds as a kind of like a double check so that when i match them out to the bank feeds they will record a transaction it will take them out of this undeposited funds used to be called now called payment to deposit this clearing account and put them into the the checking account so that's what we'll test out here so we got customer number five accounts receivable is going to go down because it's a receive payment form the other side is going to go into a clearing account which used to be called undeposited funds which they're calling now payments to deposit for the 20 cents so let's go ahead and <clears throat> record that save it and close it <clears throat> hold on my voice is going don't go voice don't go I need you I'm gonna run this we're going to the balance sheet I'm gonna run it and then we're gonna go down and say we have the clearing account payments to deposit right there payments to deposit now if I go into that let's run this again did I run it because I would think there'd be something in that one I know why hold on I'm gonna go in there and I think I have a date issue so let me let me change my date range I'm gonna make this go up to 2022 and run it 2022 and I want to pull this back into 2021 so let me fix that I apologize for that I'm gonna go back into it and do a little date ranging adjustment let's bring that on back to 2021 that's where we're working we're working in 2021 save it and close it transaction okay I'm gonna say yes save it and close it there it is now it's in now it's in 2021. Okay, now I'm gonna go back. And so now we've got our 20 cents in that payment to deposit form, 20 cents in there. We need to get that to the bank, stat. Somebody run it, run this out to the bank. We're gonna go tab to the right. Nothing's on the income statement from this one, tab to the right. And I'll update my, my report here. It takes it out because we know we no longer have customer five because they made the payment. I'm going to add more detail, customizing it and see the filters. And I want to see more details. So I want to see paid amount. I want to see all the stuff, all of it. I want to see all of it. That's what I'm talking about going in here to be hiding stuff. So then we're going to say there it is. So now we got the invoice and and the payment. That's not the one invoice and the payment down here for customer number five. Okay, so we can also see that in the first tab or the second tab in the customer detail information where now we got the payment and the invoice for customer number five and the payment is closed and everything. So now what's going to happen when we do the bank feeds? I'd like to match out the bank feeds and the bank feed will record a transaction taking it out of the 20, uh, the payment to deposit. So now I'm, I'm in flowchart terms. I'm here now and I put it into undeposited funds and instead of me doing this last step taking it out of undeposited funds putting it into the bank account i'm going to wait till it clears the bank and then i'll have the bank uh feed do that last step that's what we're doing now we're finally to the place where the bank feeds come into play this is where you shine bank feeds this is where we go so we're going to go back into the bank feeds you might need to refresh the screen to have it in place we're going to imagine then now this 20 cents clears the bank and we want to match it out to the bank feeds. It might be, it might not be able to do it as easily because it only has really the dollar amount to match out to the deposit. So sometimes it would find it automatically and match it out. 
but it would most likely be able to do that if you were matching it out to the deposit. So, you, so if you were to do this, you'd have to go into the match area most likely. It, you know, it might not automatically pick it up and then change the date range. I'm gonna change it back on over to one one and there it is, there's the payment. So I'm gonna check it off. And so now this payment went into the clearing account. So when I record this, now it's gonna record the deposit into the checking account, increase in the checking account and the other side's gonna decrease the undeposited funds with a deposit form most likely. So let's, let's save it and see if that is indeed what it does. Is that indeed what it does? Let's do a run, let's do a report and run it on the balance sheet and see if that is indeed what it does. Going into the checking account, <clears throat> checking account, check it out. We're going to go down. There's a 20 cent, 20 cent deposit, 20 cent. Isn't that like a wrapper? 20 cent. There's my 20 cent. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. 20 cents increases. I know that. I know that much. And then I'm going to go back to my report over here. And the other side is in undeposited funds. So we're going to go down, not undeposited. They changed the name to payment to deposit. Payment to deposit. Very literal. Payment to deposit. I'm going to go into it. <clears throat> and we see that it now has been reduced with, of course, the deposit form. And so if I go into it, it's not going to take me to the bank feed. It's going to take us to the deposit form. So that looks good. And so that's the second way that we can see that if I go jump on back to let's go back up. If I jump back on over to the flow chart, then <clears throat> now we've entered the deposit at this stage. No, and note we could have tweaked it a little bit. We could have we could have recorded this as a received payment and put it into the checking account and then matched up the deposit, which wouldn't record anything new, but give us kind of a double check, help us with the bank reconciliation. Next time, we're going to complete the process and actually make the deposit and then match out the deposit that we made to the deposit on the bank feeds.